Hello! So I'm finally doing the this or that tag created by Aura at Aura's Book Box. I apologise if I said your name wrong. I was tagged quite a while back by Lara at Lara L. Wing, so thank you very much Lara for tagging me and hi. So let's go. The audiobook or book in hand. The only experience I've had with an audiobook was my CD of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone read by Stephen Fry and of course I loved it because it's Harry and Stephen Fry. So thumbs up for that. But I have had no other experience with audiobooks. I have nothing against them and I, you know, applaud the talent of those enlisted to read the books and whatnot, especially if they're done well. At the end of the day though, I much, um, I enjoy, um, you know, creating kind of my own character voices in my head um, as I read. So it's sort of like it's a private individual sort of thing. And I think you can be quite easily influenced as well by how you kind of see and experience a book when you're hearing someone else read it. So I think maybe it can be something that's more enjoyable if you've already read the book and then you go and you listen to it. Sort of like seeing a film adaptation or something, you're hearing an interpretation and it's kind of, you know, that's, that's something I'd like more. But I just haven't really come in contact with audiobooks, so I don't really have an experience. Uh, soft cover or hardback? For pricing reasons, primarily I pretty much just own softcover. Um, they're also more readily available around me and they're easier and more convenient to take places. They're usually smaller, they're lighter, more flexible kind of thing. So I, that's just my preference. Um, I, I know lots of people love hardbacks because they look prettier and more professional and whatnot on the shelves and that. But at the end of the day, pricing for paperback is cheaper. And I like having the pictures on physically on the book, whereas often with hardbacks you've got the jacket flap, so you're removing the picture away from the book. It's its own separate thing over here. The book's usually just plain underneath and that. I'm weird, I don't know. It's just soft covers, power roll. Uh, fantasy world or real life issues. Fantasy world, I love, you know, excessive use of the imagination and seeing the kind of crazy stuff that people can come up with. Uh, I do, however, uh, as many people have said in this answer, I, I appreciate the inclusion and immersion of real world issues into a fantasy world setting because I think they help complement each other really well and they'll amplify one another more. Um, you know, a, a fantasy world can really highlight some, some of these real life issues, like social issues you know, themes, whatnot, and those themes can make the, the setting or the mythology or whatever um, all the more prevalent and important too. So a nice combo of both is awesome. Fiction or non-fiction, at the end of the day, fiction. I do appreciate non-fiction, autobiography, all that kind of thing. I have not read nearly as much as I probably should have in that vein, but I do own some. But yeah, at the end of the day, I love my stories. Um, the Where am I? Oh, uh, Harry Potter or Twilight, most redundant question on earth. Harry, of course. Kindle, iPad or other? Um, none of the above. Uh, I just read books, <laughs> like physical books. Um, it's because I just tend to kick it old school and I'm a little bit, I'm a bit of a technophobe. I tend to be a little bit frightened of technology, usually because I have the ability, the uncanny ability to mess anything up that has a plug or, you know, runs on batteries. So I try to stay away from it if I can. Um, I have nothing against, you know, electronic formats for reading. That's how people want to kick it so long as you're reading, really. But there's something beautiful about having, you know, a book there with you and being able to hold it, all that kind of thing. You know, I'm sort of a romantic with my books in that sense. Um, bookstore or online. I love being in a bookstore as an atmosphere and an environment to be in. It's fantastic. Who doesn't love a bookstore being surrounded by them? being surrounded by books rather. Um, it's a great place to be, not that there are many left over here because all our chain stores have closed. Uh, but they're usually expensive and they don't carry nearly as many titles so at the end of the day for convenience and pricing I will go and buy online. It's sad but true and I just I have to kick it like that because I need to be realistic and practical. So, But I love being in a bookstore and if they were all much cheaper I would be buying in bookstores all the time. Tell me one time a total trilogy. I really appreciate the value and quality of a decent standalone novel, especially these days in YA in particular, because so much is a series or a trilogy or whatever. You can't get anything in just one installment. You can't experience an entire narrative and world in the one go. It's just not happening. So when it 
when I can come across that, I really, really appreciate it and I lap it up. And I wish it was, um, you know, occurring more often, but it's very rare now because apparently series are the go and everything is just going to be part of something bigger. And usually I think it's being milked much more than it's worth all of the time. I just, too many theories for me. Monster Reader Short and Sweet. I like length in books. I would much rather more detail than less a lot of the time. I'm weird like that. And again, it's a sort of value for money thing. I'd rather buy a bigger book, a thicker book for the same pricing as a thinner book. You know, I mean, length doesn't always mean quality and, and quantity and whatnot. But there's more the potential for a bigger, better story. And, you know, I don't mind long reads. I can enjoy them. Starry-eyed romance are full of action. Um, I will, I mean, if I had to pick between the two, I'd definitely go action. Um, I think you can see a lot of character development in action, oddly enough, and it also, you know, just gives, it's more of the entertainment factor, I suppose. I'd like a nice balance between the two. I think more often or not, there's, you know, too much heavy-handed in either or. So, yeah, if the two can balance, it's the best. But certainly if it's starry-eyed romance heavy, I feel nauseated and I'm bored. Curl up and snuggy or read in the sun. I don't have a snuggy, but in theory I like to curl up and read. I read in my bed at night, which is very bad for you. You shouldn't do that. It's bad for your neck and back. But that's usually how I how I read. Um, and I'll also just, you know, curl up on the couch or whatever in the daytime and have a read. I tend to just read indoors. I'm not an outdoor person. I think I'm a bit of a vampire because I'm kind of a... I don't like the sun, <laughs> I don't like being outside, so yeah, reading indoors. Hot chocolate or latte? Sadly, I'm lactose intolerant, so I can't have either, but if I could, it would be hot chocolate, because I love me chocolate. And I don't drink coffee, so yeah, hot chocolate. Read the review or decide for yourself. Ultimately, you're going to have to decide for yourself. It's your own individual experience, whatnot. But I'm, like, I enjoy reading reviews. Often kind of scope out the kind of landscape of opinions that are going around, if it's, especially if it's something I'm really interested in or if I'm not sure kind of thing. I enjoy seeing what others think, but you can't let it obviously influence your own judgment. I like especially reading reviews and watching reviews after I've read a title or something because then you can compare and contrast and stuff. But you have to decide for yourself in the end. So yeah, that was the this or that tag. Thank you, Lara, very much for tagging me. If you haven't done this tag, consider yourself tagged. And yeah, see you later.